This is a webinar that I found on the Three Play Media website. It's hosted by Josh Miller, the website's co-founder, which is to say he's also the moderator and the one who starts the video, the topic being best practices for implementing accessible video captioning. <clears throat> this video talks more about the legality and laws of captioning and how businesses are using them, which can mean a lot of technical talk and that can get sort of boring, but I actually found it quite interesting, at least the parts that I can understand. Basically, he talks about the accessibility laws, so Section 504, for example, which talks about anti-discrimination, but super importantly, he also mentions the CVAA, the Communications and Video Accessibility Act, and then it broadens the caption laws for television to cover internet videos. So, for instance, any TV show, movie, or even clip that was once on television now has to have captions if you want it to be on YouTube or not. So what's also interesting is that certain kinds of clips, like outtakes, don't have to be captioned. It's odd that they draw the line there, and I'm sure in the future YouTube will eventually make it so that outtakes do have to be captioned, but for right now they don't. The webinar also mentions how 1 billion people today have some type of disability, and about 56 million in the U.S. alone. About 48 million people have some type of hearing loss, probably because of our aging population. This is all to say accessibility has never been more important. Going forward, he introduces us to the panel of speakers. There's a YouTube project manager, uh a manager of multimedia at Dell, and a web designer at T-Mobile. So this video really focuses on the YouTube project manager with questions like how can content creators use captions in their videos, how can subtitles help the multilingual community, which amazingly is about 80% of YouTube's viewers. Some of my favorite takeaways from this video are, for example, when the Dell manager talks about how the, how the speaker matters when transcribing, so people with a heavy accent might not be right. At Dell, they're actually starting to caption all of their newer videos for their employees, but their legacy videos aren't typically captioned. This is what we've been talking about all semester in class, with older archive content being left to degrade and usually forgetting to be updated. Something else I liked was when the YouTube manager talks about auto-captions and manual ones. So auto-captions are an option for those who didn't add captions to begin with. This is, the sake, uh, this is the sake of being universally accessible, or usually for the sake, rather, of being universally accessible. Obviously, they're far from perfect. The goal is to help people, to encourage them to add high-quality captions of their own. The thing is, you have to add captions to yourself if you want them to be indexed. That's assuming you use a site like Google that looks at captions to help people find your video. There's this neat analogy in the video that speaks to the virtue of captioning your video. It goes, a newspaper is the perfect kind of media if you're looking to be found. It has a headline, a title, subtitles. If your video doesn't have any of that or any captioning, it's practically impossible to be found, at least by Google. Near the end of the webinar, the Google manager talks about the problems with mobile captions, about how screens have, um, have often have captions um, that obstruct too much of the picture, so small screens like phones, obviously, um, have only so much space when you're trying to watch something on them. So that's a long-term issue that they're working on. But I'd also like to know how computer uh, caption technologies are, are going to be able to adapt in the future with so many different technologies and different versions of software out there.